the moon visits three planets. Hey there, stargazers. I'm Dean Regis, astronomer for the Cincinnati Observatory. And I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Plow Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. We're here to help you find your way around the sky. People often ask us, Hey, stargazers, I was outside last night and I saw a really bright star next to the moon. What the heck was that thing? If the star was so bright that you noticed it, it probably wasn't a star at all. It may have been a planet, but which one? Over the course of a month, the moon can appear to pass near any of the five planets visible to the naked eye. It could have been Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, or Saturn. Well, it just so happens that the moon will visit three of these planets next week, and we want you to get ready to identify them all. Let's head out to the sky and follow the wandering moon. Okay, we're gonna start with the night of Halloween, October 31st. Luckily, we're neither superstitious nor scared of the dark. Plus, the moon is not full this Halloween and was actually new the night before. But we're setting the stage for the moon's impending appearance. We're looking to the southwest just after sunset around 7.30 p.m. It's not completely dark outside, but I see three planets already. People ask us all the time how we can tell planets from stars in the sky. It definitely takes a little practice, but if you keep looking up frequently, over time, you'll get to know where they are. Especially if someone can point them out to you first. And we'll show you the three planets for Halloween. For now, we're going to label them one, two, and three. You're not gonna tell them what they are? No, no, not yet. I wanna build up the excitement. Ah, good idea. The planets all circle the sun in a flat disk, so they often line up near an imaginary line we call the ecliptic. Basically, that's where eclipses can occur. Exactly, and that also means that the sun and moon can always be found near this line. And the moon, as it circles the Earth, must pass near all the planets once a month. Now we're going to move our time forward day by day and see what changes. At 7.30 p.m. on November 1st, hello there, what do you notice? Just above the horizon, you might, just might, see the slimmest crescent moon. It will be extremely low in the sky and will set fast. So a better chance of catching it would be on the next night, November 2nd. As the moon wanders along the ecliptic, it looks like it's cozying up to our first two planets. Now we can tell you what they are. Finally, planet number one is dazzlingly bright. It's suspiciously bright. It is Venus. Venus is sometimes called the evening star since at times you can catch it just after sunset. It'll be easy to spot all this month but you might miss the fainter planet right next to it. That harder to see object, planet number two, is in reality the planet Saturn. Saturn is way bigger than Venus, but right now it's way farther away. Venus is about 110 million miles from Earth, while Saturn is a whopping one billion miles away. That leaves planet number three all by itself way over there in the southern sky. It won't be lonely for long because as we move forward to the night of November 3rd, November 4th, and November 5th, the crescent moon will appear fuller and near the red planet Mars. That's right, James. Mars is still hanging around in the sky. It was a lot closer to us earlier in the year, but now it's even farther than Venus at around 116 million miles from Earth. Mars is nowhere near as bright as Venus, but it will be easy to spot for a few months and glow with a yellow, orange, or red tint. So, check out the sky next week and let the wandering moon be your guide. It will pass by the planets Venus and Saturn on November 2nd and the red planet Mars on November 5th. Who knows what else you'll find when you keep, keep looking, looking up. up.